So what patterns do we see from applying these three tools? So you guys, congratulations, you've actually done the tools, so that part is over. So now we can start to see some patterns. This becomes a bit easier, and then we can then draw some meaning from this. So for the patterns, um, we're, gonna, we're gonna apply three different patterns. So again, for three different tools. So one pattern we're gonna do is we're gonna look through this whole text, and we're gonna try and break it down into like major buckets. Because something which is very common for a lot of biblical text is that you tend to um, I call them movements. You tend to have waves of repeated words that are used to emphasize the meaning of the passage. So we're going to look at repeated words to, to help us break this passage into, like bigger, into a few smaller chunks. Um, or I call them big buckets because there'll be like three, four, or five buckets. So that's the first thing we're going to do. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to go through this text and we're going to look at all the words we labeled as a who. We'll put them all together. All the words we labeled, all the, all the, I guess I should call them bits, all the bits we labeled as what, we put them all together. All the ones that are where, we put them all together. So that's the second grouping we're going to do. And this third grouping, to look for patterns, is literally taking all the items based on the same color and put them into boxes. That's what we're, we're going to do. And then from there, we'll look at that and see what, what can we draw from, this, um, from these tools that we've been applying. All right, so um, let me just quickly describe the first tool. Um, or the first, sorry, the first um, grouping. So when I look at this text, I notice that um, what, what pops out for me is anytime there is a, an, an entire phrase that's repeated, that's usually very important because that's telling you that that phrase is a linchpin in understanding this text. So let me give an example of what, of what that means. Um, all right. Um, the, the part I want us to see, it's, a, it's now highlighted in pink, so it's a little bit harder to see, but on, but on your paper, it says, to the, praise of, uh, to, the, to the praise of the glory of his grace. Now, that same phrase is repeated a couple times. So let's scroll down and see the next time that it appears. Where do you see that appearing? So what you notice is it, the, almost the same exact words appear. Instead of of, it just says, to the praise of his glory. So we see that repeated again. And again, the last line as well also has the same thing, to the praise of his glory. So it raises the question of why is this being repeated and what does it mean? And let me... Um, you, let me, let me give an example of, of how we know there's some significance to the fact that this is repeated three times. Let me ask, to the praise of his glory, is that something you'd classify as a what, a where, a when, a how, or a why? It's a why. So we know now that something is happening multiple times, and every time it happens, it's always ending with God saying that I am doing this because, why? Well, to the praise of his glory. So we know that that is a, is a repeated phrase and what I'll do, what I would contest, and you guys can see if you would agree with this, is that each of the times that is discussed, it's at the end of something that God is doing. So God is, or something is happening, and the reason he's doing it is because this is why God is doing it, for the praise of his glory. Then something, then we begin a new movement. I call these movements. And it starts again, and something happens, there's a what, a where, a whole bunch of things happens, and it ends with, well, this is why he did it. And then the final one, as I said at the very end, Something's happening with there's a who, there's a what, there's a where, and it ends with why he did it. So I'll contest, and you guys can see if you agree, that you can break this passage into three main buckets. Okay, so bear with me. Um, so that's the first tool. So let's pause on that one. We'll come back to those three buckets, of, or three movements, um, arguably. And now, what I want us to do is let's jump to the second pattern that I said we're going to do, which is grouping all the words that are related to who and the ones that are related to what and the where and the when. Great. And so for you at home, I definitely encourage you to take the time now, um, before you jump to the next sheet, to do this yourself where you literally take the words. It's obviously easy, easy to do this with, um, you know, with a laptop or you know, some mobile device, but you could, you could still write this out, it'll just take time. <laughs> um, and then just group these words together and then look at it and then tell us what you're able to glean. What are you able to see from the fact that of the words that are related to who and the where and the when and the how. So we've grouped all the words, we, and what I've done here is I deliberately did not include all the who's and all the where's and all the how's, because again, I want you guys to do this at home yourself. 
but I just grouped some of them to show you how we can draw some, um, some relationships. So let's look at that, at the who. What do you notice about the who? Huh, who's the who about? Anybody here in our audience? Anything you notice about the who? Yeah, so we notice that it's about God, and then we also notice that who's in the beloved? By which he freely bestowed favor on us in the beloved. If you go back to your text and see who in the beloved is, um, you'll see that it's he freely bestowed favor on in the beloved. So is in the beloved God? So is he God and in the beloved God? Or is in the beloved someone else? Jesus. It's Jesus. So we can see that the who tends to be about God and about Jesus. So there's something happening about the who that relates to God and Jesus. Um, you'll also find as you label the other who's, there's also a who in terms of us and you. And we'll go into that in a bit, in a bit more um, in a minute. Anything else that you notice about the when? What do you notice about the when? What time period are we talking about? Is it... Um, something about during is an after. What do we notice? Before. It's before. So everything actually is insinuating that everything is occurring beforehand. Um, and interesting enough, it's not just beforehand. Specifically, when it says before the foundation of the world, any of the time that the time is mentioned, everything is actually mentioned in the context of before um, the foundation of the world. Um, let me... Any questions? Let me give one more example. Let's look at the, at the why, then we'll look at the how. So what do we notice about the why? What patterns do you see when you look at the why? Yep. So we see that. Anything else you guys see that's repeated in there as well? Or anything else you see that sticks out? His grace. His grace. So, the who, so all the whys are in reference to who? They're all in reference to God. So the whole reason for this, when we look at this passage, that Paul is communicating, the very essence of why it's being done is because this is what God wants. It's his will. It's his desire. He, he, he loves you. This. this is what he always wanted to do and he always wants to do. So we can, we can draw that meaning from the why. The last one I'll look at is the how. What do you notice about the how? It's all through Jesus. It is all through Jesus. So we have... Um, in Christ, through his blood, in Christ. The last one we have is sealed with the Holy Spirit. That's the only one that's different, and we'll go into that. But you can say that every time we see the in, that's how I knew before that, oh, wait a second, there's a theme here where anytime there's an in, and you can see in him is repeated three times, in Christ is repeated two times, then we realize, oh, wait a second, anytime the in is referenced, it's a how. So that's going to be critical to how we put all this together. Great, so you guys have done a great job of looking at this. Now let's scroll down a bit to the next page where we look at the colors now. So this is the third pattern. What do you notice about the grouping of this text based on colors? I'll let you guys pick one and I can describe one or two others. Anything else? I see, I see some people having aha moments but not expressing it. Any bucks that you notice anything? All right, let me give an example. Let's, let's take the first one on the top right, so through. What do you notice about those words? See how the colors actually seem to um, have a repetition of the phrase? So through him, or through Jesus, we are assigned an inheritance. Then again, we see through our faith, we are still with the Holy Spirit with um, who is a pledge of our inheritance. So notice how there is a through, which we said is a how, and the result of that is an inheritance. So there's a relationship between the fact that um, through Jesus and through the Holy Spirit, there is something that we're getting, an inheritance. And then let's look at the, um, 
Um, we'll look at the preposition. So look at the, the first one with God and Jesus. What do we notice about those prepositions? The prepositions about God versus the prepositions about Jesus. What you notice as you look at that is the prepositions about God tend to be about, it's almost like him as a, as, as a, um, as existing. So it's, you know, be the God, it's to himself, it's before him. But notice there's only one time it says um, in him, if I remember correctly. But look at how many times it's repeated um, of his or of God or of him. And now compare that to when we look at the prepositions for Jesus. What is the most repeated prepositions for Jesus? Through. Through. Anything else? In. So it's like everything that God is doing, he is doing it through him, through Jesus. So then we start to see that these are not just random phrases and words that Paul is using. He's, it's designed very specifically. So now what I'm going to do is, We've, we've now applied those um, three patterns. What I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a summary, and then we're going to work backwards and see how the colors and these, these tools allowed us to draw that summary. So we're going to jump back. So remember we said there are three movements. So in these three movements, notice how you had highlighted um, two things I want you to notice. First is, who is the primary person that's been spoken about in the first movement. So the first movement ends with, with the praise of his glory. So you guys can go back to your second sheet. We can either use this version, if you guys have that. So what I'm asking is, this is the first movement. We go all the way from blessed be God the Father, and we scroll all the way down to... Um, to the praise of his glory. Remember we said to the praise of his glory is how we end the movement. So now let me ask the question, who is the main character that we're looking at when we read from blessed be God to the Father all the way to, to the praise of his glory? Let's just walk through this slowly. So the first part, um, so the first part, we said the who was God. It's God who is the primary person at the beginning of this. Now, what did God do? Well, he's the one that blessed us. We said, so that's God who's doing that. And then we jump to, well, there's things that he did, like he chose us. Now, who chose us? Is it Christ who chose us or is it God who chose us? We said before that it was God who chose us. But, it, but what is he doing? He's doing it through Christ in him. So we can distinguish that, oh, God is a primary person in this, but he's doing it through him. So we can say, have him predestined us. God is the one who predestined us. But how did he do it? Well, he did it through Jesus Christ. So Jesus now becomes the how, but the primary person that's been spoken about in that first um, movement is God. So let's jump to the, um, to the second movement. So in the second movement, this starts with, by which he freely bestowed favor on us. Um, so in the second movement, what you'll find is, let me ask, who do you think is the primary person being spoken about in the second movement? Let's take some time to read. Let's read it together. So it says, by which he, so we know he freely bestowed favor on us in the beloved. So he is God. So that's what God do, did through Jesus. But as we read, we then say, in whom we have redemption. Who do we have redemption in? Jesus. Through his blood, the forgiveness of our um, the forgiveness of our trespasses. So that is all about Jesus. Now the next segment, you can argue, well, I'm not sure who the he is, so we'll pause there and we'll jump to the next page. And when you jump to the next page, it then continues with God talking about what he's done in, in him. So we have, what did God do in him? Well, he did um, to the full administration the fullness of time. So he did it who? In Christ. So all these things he did in Christ. Then it talks about in the heavenly realms, in the earthly realms, all these things. Who are they in? They're all in Christ. So we notice that second version, that second movement is all about Christ. Um, and then the third movement, so now we jump to where it says, let's see. So we jump to where it starts with 
Yes, that's right. We who had hoped. So now there's something to notice from this part where it says, we who had hoped before in Christ. Now as we look through this part, um, so the, the we who we had hoped, okay, so we know the we, that's not Christ, but it says we who had hoped in Christ. Now notice something. This is the first time we're reading this, the, the first time a word pops up, and that word is you. Everything else before that was always a we or an us or an our. And this is the first time you pops up. So there's something different that's happening at this point. And so as we continue reading that, um, who is the main character in this between God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit? Or I can even act it differently. Who pops up this time that has not popped up before? <laughs> the Holy Spirit pops up this time. So what we're going to argue is, when we read this, the first movement is about God, second about Jesus, the third is about the Holy Spirit. Now, taking that part, and now also putting on top of that layer, remember, we said the first two movements were about we and us, and the last one was about you. So there's a part which you guys don't have, which is if you continue reading this letter that Paul wrote, you'd realize that he said um, explicitly that when I talk about we, I'm talking about the Israelites, an hour, the Israelites, us, the Israelites. When I talk about you, I'm talking about the people who the letter is to, the people in Ephesus. It's the Gentiles. It's you. So that's who the you are. 